is way too close. There's a coop right there, like seven feet away from me. All right, whatever. I'm not going to get a shot of the coot anyways. <laughs> oh, what's up, guys? Welcome to another <laughs> freezing cold. This time it's a budget wildlife episode. There's a buffalo head coming over here. That's one of the things I'm after. Oh, he just dove. Okay. So, what are we doing out here today? Well, I've had a lot of questions over the last year or so about budget wildlife options. And specifically for me, because I'm in the Canon world, budget Canon mirrorless wildlife options. So I've done a lot of stuff with the 800. Uh, if you guys are not new to my channel, then you will probably know that. If you're new to my channel, then um, I do a lot of wildlife stuff with various lenses and cameras and whatnot. Usually what I'm rolling with is my R5 and my R6 uh, and like maybe this 800 or my 1-500 to is my preferred go-to lens. And I've actually, so this is the RP and I've actually done a wildlife, the RP for wildlife video review where I reviewed this camera specifically for wildlife. That's not what this is going to be. This is not going to be a review. Um, however, when I did that review, I did not, this lens, this 800 did not exist, uh, or at least I didn't know about it. It wasn't out. Uh, I didn't have it, but now I do have it and I've never used the 800 with the RP, mostly because I have the R5, which is what I'm vlogging with today. So it's like a complete reversal there. <laughs> so anyways, a lot of you guys ask me how this combo performs. And um, I've always said, I don't really know, you know, other than I know how they perform individually. So I'm out here today. I'm going to challenge myself. And I'm going to see if and what I can get with this. Hold on a second. Okay. We've got some common mergansers, We've got a bobblehead. We've got pied-billed grebe. I'm hoping for hooded mergansers. Uh, again, if you're not new to my channel, you probably know those are my nemesis birds. If you're new to my channel, welcome. That's uh, my nemesis bird. <laughs> They're always out here in the winter time, and I just. I haven't got the shot that I really want. I've got some shots of them, but not the shot that I'm looking for in my head. So we're having a couple of other problems this morning, starting off <laughs> as per my usual. It's a little cold. It's uh, It was 30 when I left my house this morning. When I got here, about 20 miles away, it's 19. But there's no wind at all, so that's lucky. And in the sun, it feels absolutely wonderful. But I am not in the sun. I am in the shade because I want the sun to my back so that I can have these birds lit up because I'm shooting with the 800. So I need all the light I can get. And that brings me to problem number two, is in the shade, <laughs> there is a lot of snow still. It, it snowed a few weeks ago and uh, here at 8,000 feet in the shade on the north side, the north face of things, the, the snow doesn't go away, even though it's been like 60, 70 degrees. It was like 68 yesterday. Like this whole past week has been 60s. The sun, the, uh, the snow's not going anywhere in the shade yet, especially when it's still getting down to teens at night. The other problem with the snow is that it makes things really loud when I approach. So it's going to be very difficult to get into position, especially now that it's daylight. So I'm not gonna vlog much. 
I think I'm going to try to get a few more shots on this side in the shade with the good light. And then I'm going to head over to the sunlight and do some backlit stuff. And uh, maybe I can be, despite the light, maybe I can be a little sneakier on that side because it'll be quiet. I'll put my, uh, put my camo up, my ghillie suit all on, and go hunker down in some tall grass and wait for some birdies to go by. All right. Let's get off this frozen ground for a minute. I cannot feel my hind quarters. getting really hot. It was 20 degrees a little bit ago. Now it's 55. High of 65 today. I was really hoping the eagles would come out. There's a pair of bald eagles over there. But it's mid-morning now. Everything's taking a siesta except for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've been sitting here for probably an hour or so now. Not a whole lot happening. Nary a bird in sight. <laughs> They're all over there and over there. It's supposed to get really windy today. It said uh, gusts of 45 and, and higher and sustained 25 to 35 mile an hour winds. And right as I'm talking, I can see on the lake the water starting to the wind starting to pick up. I can feel it coming up over. It's gonna start getting a bit drafty out here. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm having some issues and uh it's difficult. You know, YouTubers, maybe I don't know, maybe just me in general. I know that I've said a lot of times, uh a lot of people say, you know, gear doesn't matter. Well, I would like to add, and I've said this before, gear doesn't matter until it does. And while I'm trying to prove a point that yes, you can go out and do wildlife on a budget. Also, budget is a relative term. Everybody's budget is different. You know, while I'm trying to prove that you can, and you can, technique is what matters most you know, and good light. And it's to be debated whether or not this is good light. So most people consider this, most photographers would consider this light uh, too harsh. This is not a cloud in the sky, the sun's getting higher. However, when you have things like this, this 800, uh, this much light is very behooving. It's, it's very handy, helping me keep those ISOs down which I don't care about, you know, I don't care about going high ISO, even on the RP, the RP does, it does all right with high ISOs, especially with just a little bit of noise reduction in post, clean that stuff right up. What I'm struggling with most is the autofocus, you know, that, and I've, I said that in my initial uh, video about the RP for wildlife, and I'll say it again, the autofocus for wildlife is just absolutely atrocious. 
you know, the, the IAF and everything and the autofocus works great if you want to do portraits or landscapes or whatever. But for wildlife, it's really hard. So I have it in the center point AF mode uh, on servo. And basically, I'm just keeping it center point because that's the easiest way. The problem is like out here on the water, especially when you have bigger waves and ripples and stuff, um, if I have it at multi-group select where it, it tries to pick out, you know, whatever, it'll get the duck or the bird or whatever, but then it'll lose it on the water and it'll just focus on another part of the water and I don't want that. So I stick to single point. That's the easiest for me. That's how I do it on the DSLRs too for the same reason. Here comes that wind, big gust coming. It's just all of a sudden like someone flipped a wind switch and now here it comes. The water just went from glassy to seriously choppy in about five seconds. So yeah, I'm struggling with, uh, with the autofocus for sure. Is that my eagle? Yep. If I know I'm gonna be doing bird in flight though with the RP specifically, and especially like today, there's no clouds in the sky. If I know I'm gonna be shooting birds and they're in the sky, then I will switch it to the zone select and I'll, I'll do a bigger group so that it can lock on to the bird easier. But if the bird dives down around the water area, that's, that's going to be hard to hold on through the trees and the water line. The RP really struggles with that. I like this spot because a lot of times they'll come dive right in front of me. And the good news is with the wind going that way, they're going to come this way. And if they dive right there, they're going to be coming out right in front of me because they like to take off into the wind because it picks their wind up, you know, just like airplanes. Well, that's where airplanes get it from. We copy the birds. But yeah, they like to, uh, they like to take off into the wind. So that's another tip for birds in flight, big waterfowl, raptors, things of that nature. If you want to get cool shots of them, see if you can get the wind to your back. And you won't just get bird rump feathers. <laughs> You'll get the front. What do you say we'd make things even harder? I'm going to try to go over there to where the birds are and do some backlit stuff. And I'm going to see if I can get this eagle. Here he comes. He's still just too far away. All right, let's see what happens.
right, well, I got home, had some tea, some second breakfast, and I've been editing the uh, images, scrolling through, and I actually, I got a few images that I think are okay. So again, that's a relative term. Standards are different for everybody. Um, I got, I'm happy with what I got. I, I got a few more keepers than I thought I would, but nothing more than like a three star, really. I did manage to pull off a couple of bird in flight shots that I didn't think I was gonna nail. And, and I had that hesitation because of the camera. So, you know, like I said, I've been frustrated with the autofocus of the RP coming down from my R5 and my R6. And, you know, that's, that was a big concern for me. But luckily, and I'm not trying to sound uh, pretentious or toot my own horn or anything, but really the saving grace for me here and even being able to get these shots was, it comes down to technique and uh, knowledge in terms of knowing the wildlife, knowing what they're going to do, knowing their habits, knowing, you know, that kind of thing. And then combining that with just years of like panning practice and technique, hand holding stuff. All of that, I think, really helped me get over the shortcomings of the RP's autofocus. And because of that, I was able to at least get a couple of decent images. You know, these mergansers in flight, uh, they, they were moving really quickly and they were kind of close to me. So that, you know, the closer a moving subject is to you with a really long focal length, the harder it is to, to capture it without uh, some sort of motion blur or I mean even at four thousandth of a second or thirty two hundredth of a second whatever I was at and then I got a couple of still shots of you know birds that weren't moving like this hawk and the sparrow and you know a bunch of other things like that so those those came out okay there's definitely no portfolio images I got this eagle diving and I was really excited but uh, I definitely was I was in the middle of actually walking back to the car so I wasn't if I would have been where I was sitting um, five minutes before that, I was in the perfect spot, lower to the water, sitting by the edge, waiting, and I finally gave up and decided to walk back. And right as I did that, of course, uh, higher ground, walking back, bad angle. Of course, that's when I saw it, but luckily the technique paid off. I had all my settings ready. Uh, I knew that bird in flight was what I was after, so I had all the settings set up, and somehow I managed to nail a couple of shots. Even though they weren't really where I wanted to be, I was still really stoked that I got them at all. So I'm not sure what the moral of the story is here overall. <laughs> um, I guess it's, you know, do what you need to do, use what you have, and the most important thing for me is to go out there and have fun and enjoy being in nature. I absolutely loved being out there this morning as I do every morning. And it doesn't matter what camera I have, I'm gonna make it work the best that I can. But go out there, practice your technique. Don't worry about the camera, don't worry about the lens. Just set it up as best as you can like I did. And the key is practice. Learn what those animals are doing, learn where they're gonna be, learn the wind and the sun and the light and your panning and all of that stuff and it'll all combine to the more you do it the better hopefully your images will become on the note of specifically budget wildlife systems would i recommend this system overall no i i definitely just like i said in my original rp review i do not recommend the rp as a wildlife specific camera it's not made for that it's great for lightweight travel type stuff. Clearly you can do wildlife with it, uh, as hopefully I've shown, but it's just lacking in so many ways. The frame rate is just abysmal. Getting like two, three shots per second is just, the blackout is horrible. The autofocus just isn't what I want. So if you're looking at super budget, Canon, mirrorless, unfortunately there just really isn't anything there. The best thing you can do is you know, the, there's just the problem is there's such a huge price gap between the RP and the R6, which is really the entry that I would recommend for Canon mirrorless for wildlife. Maybe someday, theoretically, there's going to be an R7, 
but there is people keep asking me so much about that but there's just no concrete evidence as of the time of recording this uh, that it's out there that it's coming anytime soon if and when that day happens i'm sure i would definitely recommend that for wildlife over uh, an rp the bonus though here for being on the mirrorless system is i have access to the 800 which as you can see i mean i've cropped in the, all of these images were cropped and even cropping in on the 800 a lot of the stuff was still just too far away so having that 800 was amazing if i would have just had the rf1 to 400 or something it just wouldn't have been long enough for me personally i, I would have struggled a lot more with that except for the bird in flight part so in that regard i'm definitely glad that i'm on the uh, the rf system having access to the 800 because for this style of shooting for me for where i live for what I'm after right now, I'm, the RF 800 is just perfect for that. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. It's tea time again. I still have to finish editing and then I have to start dinner. So if you guys have any questions about anything in the video, leave them in the comments below and you know I will answer them. I hope you enjoyed at least seeing me try and potentially failing or succeeding uh, with the budget system, with the different system. You know, I it's fun. I like to challenge myself and you guys put me up to it. So thanks to all of you who had enough interest in, you know, requesting this. You know, I just wanted to try something different and uh, show that maybe it is possible, even if uh, you might struggle a little bit. And that goes to the last thing that I want to say. Just have a positive attitude, you know, like you're going to fail. I failed. I struggled. I was miserable. But even though I was miserable and stressed out and struggling and all that, I was still you flip that switch you maintain that attitude you look at the beautiful day you look at the wildlife you just enjoy yourself being out there there's just nothing better than that so hit that like button if you're still around because i super appreciate it and i appreciate you for sticking around i've definitely got a lot more wildlife stuff coming up so hit that subscribe button if you're into this sort of thing and i will see you in the next one